The Chinese from Great Wall Motors have come to Germany to the heartland of the automotive industry with the Way Coffee Zero One. Here today with Thomas and Auto Crew, let's see what taste this blend of coffee has. And here, the Way Coffee Zero One has this chrome front grille, a little bit Lincoln like, isn't it? With the Way logo and modern headlamps, optional with laser lighting and also modern daytime signature right here. The color for the day is Arctic blue and that very well fits to the Arctic temperatures here at the moment we have in Germany. Can they succeed with this blend here in the German market? It will be very interesting. It's a plug-in hybrid SUV supposed to have an all-electric range of 150 kilometers or 90 miles. That's of course very substantial from a 42 kilowatt hour battery. That's a huge battery for a plug-in hybrid vehicle and they want to sell this one here at around 50,000 euros, this will be a very competitive price. But what else do you get for that? The length here is 4 meters 87 or 192 inches. That's really interesting because if you think about BMW X3 and X5, it's exactly in between. So not as for European taste full-size SUV, but not mid-size, in between. And so they want to have a unique market position with the length of this vehicle and also considering the length and then at that price. Because even if you add some extra options, you can maybe spec some 5,000 euros or dollars in the vehicle. It is basically already all set. Wheels here come from 20 or 21 inch. These ones here are the bigger ones with a very open, cool design and also a very clean design here at the rear falling chrome line right here and quite strong shoulders and these door handles oh, seem to be like from a Range Rover Vela we know this ones um, and they also go in when you close the vehicle to be more wind efficient. As for the drivetrain you have combustion engine in the front one electric motor in the front and the second electric motor in the rear that one is the stronger one then and overall system output is around 460 horsepower that's astonishing as well and the acceleration figure will be around just five seconds to one kilometers or 62 miles an hour very powerful here the rear design once again with the vertical running light or braking light here as it stands right now once again a very clean design with a chrome contrast in the lower part and the top speed will be at 245 kilometers an hour or 145 miles and turning indicators cascading here in the rear and even in the front fancy cascading style let's check out the interior door closing sound very solid like that and here also the panel gaps here already is prototype very well done then instead of the doors this is here in, um, you know one of the more sophisticated trims you can also get a little bit more plain but here we have this quilted structure and here and also leather red materials here also a little bit softer for example steering wheel huh? sadly here with capacitive buttons so i would have hoped for some more manual there but they want to be more high tech alike but also the steering wheel is by the way from animal free material the whole interior is indeed vegan and also as for the seats then of course here the seating is either like this with microfiber and this quilted structure or comes with a full leatherette a slick surface if you want if you want to wipe it clean also cooled seats are available and you have different colors here for example gray then with this blue nauseations or also uh, with purple then also black or brown is available so different choices as well and they look really cool also here especially with the quilting that makes a very very good impression but are they also comfortable well first seating test here actually quite good and cozy and especially here in that shoulder area good support with one meters 86 or six foot one i also have enough headroom left and there's a huge panoramic roof here and you can also open that this is the car key and interesting is it basically is their logo that's why it's also so long uh, that's a very neat idea the interior here with a huge middle console and screen screen screens 9.2 inch digital instruments small zoom module to that head-up display also zoom module to that then a huge 14.6 inch infotainment screen zoom module to that and another nine inch screen here for the climate unit you know i prefer manual climate dials they have here this solution and you can see it's you know from a user interface because it's really really flat this integration here probably would have been better if they would more have you know like this integration the screens zoom on deals here soft touch here also the dashboard once again it looks like build, good build quality also on in the interior and then here we have cup holders 
also adaptive. This is then the shifting lever, soon for a test drive. And this is an inductive charging pad for your smartphone and this is like a split opening for some more space. Instruments here kept it rather simple, speed and some basic GPS information because they are rather relying on the head-up display. Yeah, there it is here. They rather rely on the head-up display and also you can see with augmented reality arrows. In a short preview of the infotainment system here could be surely a little bit more responsive here or <laughs> still says test version and here you also have this you know this app kind of view this one here then um, for the car setting that looks a little bit tesla alike right um, but then you can also see there will be different driving modes available soon also more when we drive it let's take a look at here color selections for the ambient lighting it's also quite spectacular is here you can uh, have this 360 view <laughs> like this you know this climate unit yeah i think that's just has has the wrong angle to control it properly while driving but this is actually quite easy here to press the steering wheel and for the steering wheel heating now let's get to the rear and wow this is really like a lot of rear legroom look at that this is um so they obviously paid a lot of attention to that yeah and you know in in china it's really very important for the vehicles to have a lot of rear leg room therefore usually there are sometimes like longer version of vehicles we have in europe or in the us and they have a even longer long wheelbase but here a lot of rear legroom indeed super spacious then headroom here also works once again you can once again see that panoramic roof and nice bright headliner here the build quality so far seems also quite good and it's also in a you know quite comfortable seating position here in the rear you can also vary here the back of the seat like this you can put it a little bit more upright like this or more back like this and then you have here some cup holders there we go a little bit slow as for now at least so but overall i think yeah i think the space the leg room especially is the main thing here as for the trunk let's see here we go electric catch prototype a little bit slow at the moment here the width is about a meter or 40 inches it's not too high actually but you can see here the cabin trolley does fit in in a vertical way and the length here is also around a meter or 40 inches the overall height here 70 centimeters or 28 inches and you can also fold the seats if i reach over here um, i can already do that from here right there you can see at the moment the engine is running this is a two liter four cylinder with just over 200 horsepower nine speed dual clutch transmission the rear electric motor 160 horsepower and the front electric motor 90 horsepower and then we get to this overall horsepower count recharging will be 11 kilowatt ac or 80 kilowatt dc and then a full charge with 80 kilowatt dc should take about 25 minutes And now we're taking a spin together with head of vehicle for Europe for Great Wall Motors with LX12. And we cannot drive ourselves today, not allowed yet, because this is a prototype, but he will guide us through. So uh, we, we can see here the 3D or the 360 degree camera. So uh, it seems like a very good re resolution so far. Uh, will it be always activated when you start slowly or how, how does it work? You can activate it that it's uh, automatically on or even when you're steering left or right that's like a blind um, addition to the blind spot that it's always on. Um, up to 32 kilometers you can see it always and you can spin it during driving. Over 32 kilometers it turns off. Oh, okay. The video screen. So um, how is it with the distribution of the different electric motors and the engine so what is like the predominant drive the predominant drive is normally the p4 in the back you can see it here it's always the p4 it's the electric axle um, normally when you drive an ev mode or an automatic mode uh, normally 80 percent of that when you have the full charge battery the p4 should work uh, so you have only a rear wheel drive when you need a little bit more power than the additional p2 mod uh, engine in the front um, get an additional power and we need more power than that than the ICE can, um, combustion engine will start and you have more power so the that. EV driving is always the focus basically. yes exactly okay, okay. 
Can you show us like a very strong acceleration from this five seconds is supposed to be? We can do that. Nobody is there. Okay, then we go here. I think we will not get all the power to the ground, but we can see now. Let's roll a little bit, then we get more power, and then we dig on there. Yeah, it's spinning. Well, that was like 10 to 100 or something. Wow, that was quite quite impressive. So. Uh, even for this weight, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, it's 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 not a small vehicle at, at all. So we first had this electric drive, instant torque, and then the engine came came to that. But it's you know you more thought about that people mainly drive it all electric, then recharge and just have like the combustion engine for longer drives. Or what was the plan for that? I think it's that like in the in the cities when you go like in the in the city center something like that I think then the focus is really 100% of the electric drive and even on the highway when you're going about 150 or 140 with the combustion engine and when you need a little bit more power and you just want to overtake the boost of the electric is so so strong that you really can overtake everything even when you want to show a Porsche or something like that <laughs> that you have some power under your hood. How fast does it go all electric? Uh, um, normally, as a really always um, about 135, 139 kilometers an hour, but you can go up to when you really slowly um, accelerate up to 160 kilometers an hour only electric. And even when you're going 200 with the combustion engine and then going off the pedal and like flow there, then even then the EV mode goes on and then you can really fly only with EV with 200 and it holds that. The speed. So in China, this vehicle is only available only with combustion engine. Only in Europe, it will be um, for like a hybrid. Oh, okay. And so that's why it was the decision for that. We have even another brand. It's the Aura brand, and the Aura brand is the full electrical brand. And there we have over 100 kilowatt battery. You're coming here to Germany, and you know, with Audi, BMW, Mercedes. Is it like? Okay, when we make it in Germany, then we can make it everywhere. Or what was uh, was the thought behind that? Yeah, Germany because Germany, uh, Europe, it's really like critical um, car. People are there, and when when you really when you got it there, then you really can make it everywhere. Something like that. And so the combustion is really basically only for the kickdown, or when the battery is empty. Exactly. Or even when there's like a temperature issue or something like that, that it needs to help. Mm. Or even on mountains. Yeah. So that means basically, since the rear electric motor is also a stronger one, you will kind of have a rear wheel bias. So to be more agile out of the corners and, and yes. so on. So what, what would you say also from your experience with the German manufacturers? How is this one here different if you compare it to the German premium manufacturers? What would you say? The first thing I say um, for the engine itself, okay, the range, and you really can have a kick down, or even when you're when you're on the traffic light and want to have a jump start, something like that, with one or two guys next to you. When you're driving another OEM in, in Germany, you make this two times at the traffic light, but it is always empty. Here you can do it really, and then you can go even additional 100 kilometers, like to, to to skiing to Austria. That's the first different. The second different is really the size in the car. I'm a, I'm a tall guy, and I'm sitting here, and I, when I sit behind me in the same position, I have so much space that even my knees are not touching the, the seat in front, and even in the head you have more space as you you're really feeling comfy. And the the big difference is. That was the, the altitude of Mr. Way, Jack Way, that the cars of him has to be like safe. That means all the safe um, assistance systems, like all the long range, everything, cruise control, automotive driving, something like that, level two, it's all included in the base version. Mm. And only the, when you have, what you have more, pay more, it's only like color and interior, something like that. But the, the safety features and the car itself always included. And that's different to all the European OEMs. They have to pay extra for each of this um, assistance system. Yeah, I mean, um, suspension-wise, I do feel um, yeah maybe that's something you can still tune because um, it, it's I think it's rather set on the sporty notes, rather, rather you know. It's not soft at all. Some of when there are some bumps, you still feel it. So maybe an adaptive suspension could work a little bit better there. 
Um, but other than that, I mean, you do get a quite sophisticated driving feeling. I heard there's also, uh, you're aiming for 5G connectivity. Exactly. Also, uh, 5G should come now in the serial cars. We will test it in the next weeks when the first vehicle arrives in Germany. Then for the entertainment system, we have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto in there. We have um, over USB or over cell phone, you can um, have video, MP3 playing, and then even everything like um, on demand, like um, you can, like when you go here, you can see YouTube. To, um, you can some um, probably not uh, watching Auto Gefühl on YouTube while driving, right? It's exactly. When you when you when you park, right? exactly. Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, that would be too nice, right? <laughs> that would be too nice. Yes. Um, but even there, you can Spotify everything. Like it's connected. You can listen to music, even videos when you when you when you're standing somewhere. Um, then the sound system is really good. It's Infinity sound system inside. Even subwoofers under the seats. Everything is really. Good entertainment system. Even the ambi light right now it's too too bright, but the ambi light here with the light it's really great. You can choose your RGB as really the color you want, and even you can connect it to the radio. That means when the sound is running, you can make a disco light, something like that. So yes. Yeah, let's talk about how you enjoy your coffee. And um, yeah, if you want to enjoy something else in the coffee, check out the competitors of this vehicle here, the BMW X3, for example, or the Range Rover Vela. And also tell us in the comments what you think here about our first drive today with the Coffee Z Rumble Way. What do you think? Is that the right approach? Join us in the comments.